Decades ago, the question of life beyond Earth was a more open one. We knew that there were billions and billions of stars in our galaxy, but not how many of those stars had planets. Today, the odds are much more in aliens' favor. We know that most stars have planets, and that in addition to the billions and billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy, there are billions and billions of galaxies. And so, just through the math alone, even if the chances of life arising outside of Earth were worse than any lottery in history, that still means billions of planets with life on it. This, I think, means that it's more likely than not that alien life does exist. But has that life visited Earth? The chances of that, I think, are pretty much zero. Now entering the facility. In light of recent revelations, aliens, UFOs, and UAPs are now in the news more than ever. They are the subject of high-profile congressional hearings. They are the focus of entire subreddits that definitely aren't spiraling out of control with paranoia. And they are the source of memes, the millennial language of love. And I can say that I'm genuinely surprised that the reception to all of this has been widespread acceptance. So in light of this recent ETC change, let's break it all down and see where all of the pieces, which are usually just weather balloons, actually lie. Who is claiming all of this stuff? What are they actually claiming? And should we believe them or not? Why don't you just look at the hard evidence they presented? Well, because, Arya, they uh, didn't actually like present any hard evidence. Oh. Yeah. Well, here we go. <laughs> the recent explosion of interest in so-called unidentified flying objects and or unidentified aerial or anomalous phenomena seems to be the culmination of a few factors. First, there's always been a large segment of the population wanting to believe alien visitation reports. Second, in 2020, this contingent got their best evidence yet. Videos begrudgingly released by the military that are admittedly interesting, if not convincing. What brought everything to a head, however, was a high-profile congressional hearing in the United States in the July of 2023. During this hearing, a one Mr. David Grush, a former U.S. intelligence official, not only more or less affirmed everything that's ever been said about alien visitation, but he also revealed new stories of secret technologies, non-human bodies, and cover-ups by the Pope. At the same time, a well-known astrophysicist, one Dr. Avi Loeb, was everywhere, making numerous alien-related appearances that added some scientific weight to Mr. Grush's general claims. And during all of this, the United States government was busy being pressed more than ever to release anything and everything they knew about UFO and UAP programs. The atmosphere was perfect for those who want to believe. So we find ourselves in a time where we can make memes about government complaining aliens is loose and everyone is just like, yeah, of course they're real. I never thought we'd actually be here. Public perception seems to have really changed. But is that because the actual evidence has gotten that much better? Well, in a word, no. Well, how can you be so sure, Aria? Because science. Um, we don't actually say that here anymore. There's, there's a lot of, re um, you know, let's just, let's just keep going. Let's move on. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and Bill Nye with depression, Kyle Hill. You know, day to day here at the facility, I research a lot of weird stuff online. Genetic codes of zombie viruses, how many light bulbs it would take to unscrew me. I need a real shark behind me while I surf. The sponsor of today's episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is a premium virtual private network service that encrypts all of your information sent between your devices and the internet. You can use Surfshark to bypass censorship, mask your IP address, change your device's virtual location to access YouTube in Nigeria. Surfshark does not monitor, track, or store what you do online. That means no connection or activity logs. And unlike other premium VPNs, Surfshark now has thousands of servers in over a hundred countries. Be secure on the majority of the Earth's surface. Use the offer code KYLE for three extra months free, you're welcome. There's a money back guarantee and you get an unlimited number of devices on just one account. While you're surfing, protect your turf. Surfshark. Just how good is this new evidence that Mr. Grush and others are presenting to the public? 
Well, I know I'm gonna be a buzzkill here. Buzz hill. <laughs> nice. But first and foremost, anecdotes are not data. You can't just say you heard someone say something to another someone that is also secret about civilization changing technology if you want people to believe you. No, it's better to show it. Like this. The first thing any scientist or investigator worth their salt would point out about the hard-hitting testimony is that everything Mr. Grush claimed, from cover-ups to crafts to non-human craniums, was second-hand. He didn't see anything himself, nor did he present any physical evidence at his hearing. Take as a comparison what real whistleblower Edward Snowden did. He presented actual evidence of global surveillance programs and conspiracies and instantly changed the world. Why didn't Mr. Grush present something similarly top secret if he had all of this access? And as my friend Brian Dunning at Skeptoid has pointed out, the Italian crash recovery in the 1930s that Grush cited during the hearing is not good evidence either. It's directly traceable to a hoax sent to newspapers in the late 90s. Though being a United States Air Force officer and former intelligence official does make Mr. Grush more qualified than most, we know from decades of psychological studies that anecdotes and eyewitness testimony, even from experts, is the lowest form of evidence there is, the weakest foundation for any claim. Think about all of this like a scientist. It does not matter who says something. It has to be tested and verified like everything else. This democratization of discovery is in fact the beauty of science. So unfortunately, no. We are not obligated to take any of Mr. Grush's stories seriously, no matter who he heard them from, no matter how many people said similar things, allegedly, without tangible evidence. Evidence that could be as easy as just a Snowden-style PowerPoint. I would say the exact same thing even if it were Carl Sagan testifying. But evidence or not, it should not be too hard to distinguish testimony that sounds like this. Uh, I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program, uh, to which I was denied access to those additional read-ons when I uh, requested it. From testimony that is also based on expert opinion, but is far more convincing. Watch Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman physically demonstrate the relatively simple cause behind one of America's greatest tragedies. Oh, I took the stuff that I got out of your seal and I put it in ice water. And I discovered that when you put some pressure on it for a while and then undo it, it maintains, it doesn't stretch back, it stays the same dimension. In other words, for a few seconds at least, and more seconds than that, there's no resilience in this particular material when it's at a temperature of 32 degrees. I believe that has some significance for our problem. But Carl, I hear you saying, what about those weirdly compelling videos released by the military? What did you think about that? Well, first of all, fun voice, keep doing it, no notes. Second of all, science writer and co-founder of the video game studio that makes Tony Hawk's pro skater, Mick West, has pointed out that all of these so-called Tic Tac videos are much better explained as anything else terrestrial. They are gimbal weirdness from the equipment. They are IR plumes of distant engines on other aircraft. They are parallaxed balloons. Look, I'll give you a little rule of thumb here. If anyone ever says that they saw something break the laws of physics, no, they did not. They are mistaken. You're telling me that it takes ancient sunlight gravitationally lensed around the moon during an eclipse to get people to finally accept all of Einstein's theories, but just a grainy video that's explained by some weird equipment thing to disprove all of Einstein's theories? Yeah, right. You're better than that. But Kyle, this is all just what the government wants you to think. Actually, no, Arya. I think it's the opposite of that. Oh, and no, we didn't see actual alien corpses in front of Mexican Congress. Even the guy who helped put all that together thought that that was super duper cringe. I mean, I mean, come on. The astrophysicist we mentioned earlier the one people are always telling me to look up when I bring up these claims, Avi Loeb, is now world famous for his claims about the interstellar object Omnomnom. 
He flirts with the idea that it's an alien spacecraft, which in turn lends tangential legitimacy to Grush and others' claims. The UFO community loves to point out how the government and other shady individuals are incentivized to keep alien conspiracies secret, but they somehow fail to see how they are very incentivized to keep alien conspiracies going, despite the lack of any good evidence. Case in point, Dr. Loeb's alien musings have made him a world-famous astrophysicist late in his career. He's paid to speak about aliens. He's paid to write books about aliens. He's now appeared on TV thousands of times to talk about aliens. He's been paid millions of dollars in funding to entertain ideas that are unscientific at best. Money and fame are very strong incentives to believe in bad evidence. Loeb's academic colleagues think that he is now so far gone, in fact, that they show him to their students as an example of how not to do science. In other words, this new UFO UAP narrative is not what the government and the deep state are desperately trying to keep from you. No, it's what the UFO community needs to be true, to stay a community, to keep their identity. It's what they want to be true. Look, I started off my career covering the conspiracy community. I saw firsthand how even just the tiniest bit of fame and fortune can make otherwise very smart people believe very unsmart things, like that my haircut looked good. Do you know what Dr. Loeb counters with now when he's challenged on his unscientific ideas? Apparently he says, quote, extraordinary claims require extraordinary funding. Ew. I'm honestly glad that Carl Sagan is not around today to hear this bastardization of one of science's highest tenets. So, if all of these UFOs and UAPs aren't aliens, what are they? Well, we actually have studies on this. The vast majority of them are fully explainable, removing the U from those acronyms entirely. They are weather balloons, IR signatures of distant aircraft, they are hardware errors, they are perceptual mistakes from all too human humans. Look. Given that most of these UFOs and UAPs are fully explainable, it makes it even less likely that there is physics-defying stuff that we just have zero good evidence for. I do think we should investigate weird stuff in the sky and keep an open mind, but not so open that your brain falls out. Until next time. Did you tell them about the facility's saucer-shaped drone no, program? Shh. No, Arya, shh. I'm waiting to get in front of Congress to show them a little paper mache mummy dude and then get a book deal for money. <laughs> How could that go wrong? Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join us here for UFO investigating, if you want a silky white lab coat to watch videos early, to get into our private Discord, to see private live streams with yours truly once a month, patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. And if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here in every single video. Lucky you. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you. I have no idea how I'm gonna pass the time. Like I said, it's one thing to claim physics-defying stuff, which is very unlikely. It's another thing to not have a shred of evidence to back that up. It should be as easy as like a Snowden-style PowerPoint slide from one of these programs that you had access to to prove that there's something more than just he shed, she shed, they shed, alien shed, said. You know what I mean? It should be as easy as showing a piece of that artifact or craft you're talking about and showing an analysis, a spectroscopic analysis that says, oh, it has an element here that's never been discovered before and it's definitely synthetic and when you put it near humans, it does weird stuff. Anything, anything would be good. Thanks. The video's over. Go home. <laughs>